Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the English series with the Botvinnik system. I think this will be the most useful part of the series because the Botvinnik is a system opening. You can play against many things Black can do in the in against the English and we're going to be focusing uh, on the setup you can see on the screen. So the, the Botvinnik system is an opening where white has pawns on c4, d3 and e4. That's the main characteristic of the system. We're going to be attempting to enter it regardless of what black does against c4, but as you're going to see, it's not always going to be possible to play the Botvinnik. And we're going to be using it against setups where black plays with g6. If black does not play g6 uh, or setups with g6, either the Botvinnik simply isn't possible or it's no good. Okay, so what do we have in this position? Uh, before I start uh, getting into move orders, I want to explain the setup first. Well, white has several things going uh, on in this position. The first thing we can notice uh, is perfect king safety. The white king is going to be castled king side and with all the pieces around the king, uh, the normal types of king side attacks that happen in g6 systems for black in systems like the king's indian are not going to be as effective because white has tremendous central control is able to meet f5 in several different ways and there are too many defenders around the king for any sort of king side attack to be effective the pawn on g3 also helps with that uh, the next thing we can see is control over the d5 square, which is often going to be a big problem for black. And finally, white's play is extremely natural. There are several uh, ideas in this position, several, several plans you could go for, depending on what black does. Now, the most natural pawn breaks is always the thing you should look for when trying to find the middle game plan. And in the Botvinnik system, they are very natural and obvious. So White's main idea is to at some point play f4. This is provided uh, by the piece constellation and by the pawn structure. The expansion with f4 is going to be one of White's most natural plans. Uh, after that, we will have a look at the b4 break, which depending again on what black does, is also a very natural way to expand. Now, we're going to have a look at positions where, where black has a pawn on c5 and, position, and positions where black doesn't have a pawn on c5. When there are pawns on c4 and c5, both sides will be trying to play for b5 and b4. And when black plays without a pawn on c5, it will often be possible just to try and expand on the queen side with b4, gaining a lot of space. Another pawn break which may seem weird in this position is d4. Now black is either going to have a pawn on c5 or on e5. Uh, unless in rare cases where black copies what white does, uh, d4 is going to be a, a possible pawn break later on. And this brings me to my next point. White's two ways to play this position, to play the Botvinnik system, is either to start a kingside expansion with a normal attacking plan of bishop e3, queen d2, exchanging the, the bishop on g7 and continuing f4, just blasting through the kingside, or at some point playing d4, exchanging the d-pawn for the c-pawn, and playing a sort of Sicilian position with a Marozzi bind where you don't have a bad bishop on e2 locked in behind your pawns. This bishop is a monster on g2. So those are some ideas in the Botvinnik system. Now let me show you the move orders and the openings black can actually uh, play that would enable us to play the Botvinnik system. So we go c4. And as I said, we are going to be using the Botvinnik against all g6 systems. And the two main positions we will be playing it against are King's Indian positions, which are these positions where black has a bishop on g7, pawn on c5, pawn on d6. And the second type of position are going to be positions where black plays e5 instead of c5. So black has this uh, position with the bishop blocked in behind the e-pawn. Now those are going to be the main position we can positions we can play the 
in the Botvinnik against and black can start with several different moves. Uh, I should mention that if black does not start knight f6, g6 or e5, we probably are not going to be able to play the Botvinnik unless f5 is played where I do recommend something similar to the Botvinnik. You can see that in the video on the, on the Anglo-Dutch. So e5 is, I think, black's uh, best setup against the Botvinnik. Now, of course, black doesn't know what white is going to do, but players with black who play e5 against the English are going to have an advantage because I think this is the most viable, the most principled way to play. I know that this isn't the video on the reverse Sicilian, but the Botvinnik system doesn't fall under the reverse Sicilian. And in many positions, black can try to avoid the Botvinnik. Today, we are going to have a look at what happens in c4, e5 positions where black actually allows it. So after g3, knight c6 will lead to bot the Botvinnik. After bishop g2, if black plays g6, we play the Botvinnik system. However, as we are going to have a look at in the next video, black can play the normal reverse Sicilian with uh, f5, the grand prix, or, or bishop c5, which is one of the main moves, or, or knight f6, going for a reverse Mos Rosolimo after knight c3 and bishop b4. So these are some ways to avoid that. Uh, and of course, after e5, we don't have to get the opportunity to enter the Botvinnik. But again, as I said, if black allows the Botvinnik, this is what I think is black's best setup against it. So g3 knight c6 knight c3 g6 bishop g2 bishop g7 e4 d6 we have the botvinnik system now the second most popular position against the botvinnik is the one with the pawn on c5 so the king's indian type of position so after knight of six for example g3 g6 black tries to play the king's indian bishop g2 bishop g7 knight c3 castles e4 d6 knight g2 c5 this is going to be the second type of position we look at and even though this bishop is more active than when there's a pawn on e5 as we're going to see the pawn on e5 provides some excellent opportunities for black and this king's indian position against the botvinnik i think is just slightly better for white and normal botvinnik plans apply as, I, as i'm going to show you now when is the botvinnik impossible so if c4 and for example knight f6 then if we play g3 and black tries to play the nimzo indian type of position we simply cannot go for the botvinnik because black has the move d5 and after bishop to g2 and d5 we're, we're not playing the botvinnik system or after bishop g2, if black delays playing d5, we still cannot go for that because if we now play knight c3, then d5 comes and no Botvinnik, and actually black is equal. Or if we try to go e4, we try to be smart, preventing d5, then, then d5 still comes. And this, I think, is more than equal for black. So in any Nimzo Indian type of position where black starts e6 don't go for the botvinnik it's simply not possible to do that you're gonna have to know the edge and court defense which you, you, you can watch the video on that uh, and if black starts with the symmetrical english we don't have the botvinnik system guaranteed of course we can transpose to it after g3 knight c6 we can now go bishop g2 and if they go g6 we go for our normal Botvinnik against the King's Indian. However, if black starts knight f6, keeping things were my way more flexible, then this is a sort of anti-Botvinnik with, with d5. And whenever black tries to control d5 with a knight on f6 and a, or and or a pawn on e6, it's it's not going to be possible to, to go for the Botvinnik. Okay, so this setup again will be played against g6 setups by black one thing you should remember is that if black has the option to place the bishop on this diagonal on c5 then the botvinnik simply isn't as effective because expanding with f4 isn't possible black is exploiting the main hole in white's position the hole on d4 with this bishop and 
we're simply not going to be doing that. Okay, as I said, we're going to be looking at two different positions, the King's Indian position and the position with e5. I would like to start with the position with uh, c5, so the King's Indian position. Again, this may seem more active for black because the g7 bishop is more active, but I believe that this is easier for white to play. Now, white has two main plans, and... <clears throat> If you remember those two main plans, the Botvinnik against the King's Indian becomes like a magic secret weapon you have. You can play against King's Indian players and just get good positions every time. That doesn't mean you're going to win the game, but it means that you'll have a good position that's easy to play, and most importantly, in which you know what to do. Now, Milan, uh, who is a Fide master, who plays the King's Indian a lot, says, said, quote, the Botvinnik is very annoying against the King's Indian. So if he says that, and he's been playing against the main lines a lot, Milan, if you're watching, hi, I, I agree with you. I used to be of the opinion that the main lines are better, but in the last three days, I actually changed my mind. I prefer the Botvinnik to the main lines against the King's Indian now. Okay, so this is our starting position. And White's two main plans are bishop e3, queen d2, exchanging the bishop on h6 and playing f4 and just starting an attack. Very simple, very effective, very hard to prevent and very natural. You just play your moves. And the second way to play is to prepare the d4 uh, break and go into a sort of Sicilian where, for example, rook b8 uh, and bishop e3 or, or something like that when d4 is eventually played i just want to put the position on the board we get a we get a sicilian position where this bishop is on g2 and is very effective of course you have to be careful about the a7 g1 diagonal but after something like king h1 and f4 you can see that this this bishop could be open okay so those are the two main plans so either king side attack by exchanging the defender and very importantly reducing d4 control or playing for d4. Now, of course, the, the biggest downside in white's position is the hole on d4. So black's one of black's main plans is going to be to reinforce that square. And if black knows what he is doing, black is going to go for a maneuver like this. Try to put more pressure on d4, gain control over the d4 uh, hole and, and have a good position. So let's see what we can do against that now that we know what both sides want to do. Black has several options a6, rook b8, or knight e8 immediately. And I would like to say at the start that rook b8 is the best move. a6 is the same thing, it's just going to transpose. Same idea, black is preparing the, the b5 pawn break. And so we're not going to look at both, we're just going to look at one because they transpose. And knight e8, I believe, is slightly inferior. Now, why? Let's actually start with knight e8. Black is, as I said, transferring the knight to e6, trying to control d4. But black is forgetting one very important thing, what white is trying to do. White is trying to play the move bishop e3, followed by queen d2, bishop h6, and f4 our main attacking plan. Now, bishop e3 uh, punishes knight e8 directly. Why? If black had played anything else, like a6, for example, and we continue bishop e3, now there are knight g4 ideas, okay? And when black plays knight e8 to start with, there is no way to punish bishop e3. This simply punishes knight e8. We know what black is trying to do, we know what white is trying to do and both sides are doing what they want neither side is playing prophylactically now there are a couple of ways for black to play and if black continues with the most natural of knight c7 trying to play knight e6 now we change plans this relinquishes central control loses too much time in my opinion and even though it's a theoretical move this position has been played 150 times on grandmaster level it's more favorable for white because of the huge space advantage we just continued d4 and if 
well, there is no alternative to taking, basically. You, you cannot allow white to have a space advantage with the open D file, and black has a weakness on, on C5, so CD4. And now we get the Sicilian. Okay, uh, and it's possible to play moves like bishop d7, it's also possible to continue knight e6. Either way, the general principle when you have a space advantage and more space to maneuver your pieces is you don't want to trade pieces. So regardless of what black plays, either bishop d7 or knight e6 or whatever else, we decline the trade. Knight d2. This is a very famous pattern in many openings uh, and especially in, in positions where white has more space. We decline trades because black species has ha have less maneuvering space and we also support uh, the f4 square and the d4 square. Okay, so what can black do? Let's say black plays knight c5, we continue h3, preventing bishop g4, <coughs> something like bishop e6, b3 defends the pawn, a5, and now the second part of our plan, f4. And if you don't think that this is a natural position to play, uh, please let me know what's more natural than this. Now, again, this has been played a lot, and uh, it's, it's not losing for black or anything. But I think that with this space advantage, with the good bishop on g2, this is just an improvement to the regular Marozzi bind position. And there is no way uh, black could be equal in this position. White just has all the advantages. And of course, you can continue with a kingside attack. You can continue with the e5 pawn break if you prepare it. You can sometimes gain control over the d file and threaten to take on c5. You can expand with g4, g5. You can, there are ideas of, of g4 and knight g3 and f5. Of course, be careful about this bishop, but once you clear the diagonal, the bishop is good, but it's staring at, not, at nothing. So that's what I that's why I think knight c7 isn't a good move. It allows d4 immediately and in my mind, this is the dream position you would like to get against the King's Indian in the Botvinnik. If they go 98, 97, just d4 and long-term space advantage. No King's Indian ideas for black, which is the best part in my opinion. If you prevent the King's Indian player for, from playing their normal ideas, then, then that's great. So as an alternative, we're going to have a look at knight d4. And this to my mind is a more principled move where black simply says okay you played the weakening uh, c4 e4 you left the hole on d4 i'm going to occupy that hole now of course we can never uh, lift the blockade on d4 we don't want to lose a piece with knight d4 we also don't want to give up our bishop with bishop d4 so to do something useful, what we are going to do, we are going to trade off these two bishops because the bishop on g7 is lending support to d4. We want to weaken the d4 square. We would like to take when the pawn has to take and we don't lose a piece. And we also weaken the king. Now, playing for queen d2 and bishop h6 doesn't mean that we're going to start a kingside attack. This is actually strategic play. We want to increase control over d4. Okay, so knight c7, black is trying to control d4 with e5 and knight e6. We play bishop h6, and I think black's best is to play e5 to just cement the knight. So bishop takes, king takes, and now the most natural pawn break once again. Follow your pawn chain, you have two in this position, either b4 or f4, f4 in this case is is a better move because the king has been significantly weakened and black I think has nothing better but to play the move f6 now in this position the only move ever played by strong players was f6 uh, just blocking things up and meeting f5 with g5 preparing to recapture with the f-pawn and just solidifying the position. And at this point, since we don't lose a piece, we, we can just take on d4 and after cd4, retreat our knight to e2 <coughs> or to d1, okay, for example, like this. And again, white should be slightly better here. 
it's not easy to develop this bishop to open the bishop up but it's not a useless piece and you should note that e f is is never good because of a terminal weakening of the d4 square and i think even though this is black's best i would like to be white in this position you can double up your rooks on the f file you can take on e5 at some point maybe you can prepare f5 uh, if you want to you can expand on the queen side there are many many useful ideas here and of course this is a long-term weakness therefore any end game is going to be simply better for white okay so let's look at a smarter move for black instead of knight e8 allowing our normal bishop e3 black's second idea is rook b8 or, or a6 as i said now both moves have the same idea behind them you want to provoke a weakness from white you want to provoke an unnecessary waste of time so we know that white would like to play bishop e3 and if white does play bishop e3 then knight g4 can come okay so either you prevent knight g4 with h3 or you do something else okay i think h3 is the best move just preparing bishop e3 of course this is a weakening and it's not a move you would like to play but you have no choice okay and now black is going to try a6 we have to prevent b5 so a4 okay and it is possible to ignore b5 but i don't think it's a good idea we can go f4 and just say okay play b5 but for example bishop d7 bishop e3 b5 queen d2 again we're ignoring b5 and now just something like knight e8 and again looking at d4 rook a b1 knight d4 c b5 I, I i don't want to allow this if i don't have to this seems like too much activity but it is possible it's not worse for white or anything i just think it's harder to play so against a6 and rook b8 we always play a4 just remember that okay and now that we've inserted a6 rook b8 h3 and a4 black has to do the same thing again uh, black has to move the knight now playing knight e8 in this position makes where way more sense because black has provoked h3 so knight e8 bishop e3 we do the same thing knight c7 again if knight c7 d4 d4 open the center up d4 cd4 knight d4 again they could go bishop d7 they could go knight e6 whatever they do <coughs> we move the knight back knight d2 now if they ever take knight takes d4 then this end game i think is extremely good for white where is huge space advantage and the possible blockade on b6 I believe white is significantly better in this position now this has been played a couple of times and black is basically forced to play the move b5 in my opinion or gain a tempo on the queen with knight e6 or e5 if black does nothing like black, black plays a normal move and we play b a5 this seems just overwhelming so b5 i think is the best idea just making sure there is no blockade so c takes a takes and a5 black would like to set up a blockade at some point against this pawn but let's say b4 knight d5 knight d5 ed5 and for example bishop a6 with the light square blockade that's a good idea <clears throat> but we still have a passed pawn we have a passed pawn on, on on a5 and that's not easy to parry black is of course going to try to control the light squares as much as possible and set up a blockade which prevents us from moving but if we ever lift the blockade then this pawn is three squares away from queen so once again this this king's indian position i think is very easy for white to play black has basically one plan controlling d4 and we have two plans king side exchange of bishops with an attack with f4 or playing for d4 and the Sicilian where we have a good bishop on g2 I think this is more pleasant for white more natural for white 
and that white has better chances. Okay, let's move on to our next position. This is the position we get from the reverse Sicilian, so c4, e5, where black allows the botvinnik. Again, I'm going to make a separate video against the reverse Sicilian, where black plays all the other stuff that black can play. But if black allows the botvinnik g3, knight c6, knight c3, uh, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, e4, d6, knight g2, then as I said, this bishop is slightly less useful. However, black's natural pawn break of, of playing f5 becomes a very dangerous weapon. And black has several ways to play. We're going to have a look at several different moves. We're going to have a look at knight g7, knight f6, h5, f5, and bishop e6. They are all slightly different but many of them are going to transpose. So I, what I'm going to focus on, instead of showing you million theoretical variations, which I find extremely hard to understand when, I, when I'm playing, I'm going to try to explain the ideas behind, uh, behind the moves. I've just noticed that the board is slightly uh, badly placed so let me fix that okay it should be better this way sorry about that the board was out of focus so instead of showing you a bunch of theoretical lines uh i'm, I'm going to show you some i'm going to try and show you the the ideas now let's start with the most popular move which is the move knight g to e7 now knight g7 keeps things flexible prepares f5 but black isn't forced to play f5 okay now i don't think this is the most active setup i think the most active setup is playing f5 straight away and then developing the knight to f6 but we can simply divide this position into f5 with knight f6 knight f6 with f5 or knight g to e7 those are going to be three possible knight uh posts uh, in, uh, for black. Now, the first couple of moves are always simple. We play d3 and castle. Okay. Now, black has several options. Black can play bishop e6. The idea behind bishop e6 is to exchange white's good bishop on g2. And if black is going to play f5, f5 would be more favorable after the bishop exchange because there really is no easy way to use this diagonal for white at least not for now there are a few things we have to note if black plays for this bishop e6 idea which is also possible where black just starts with bishop e6 and move six as we're going to see what we have to do as a response always is the move knight d5 now the idea behind knight d5 is uh, firstly, if that's taken, black either loses a piece or gives up the bishop. But the idea is we put pressure on c7. And there is no easy way to defend this. Okay, So if something like rook c8, that's a waste of time and the rook is useless on c8. And by playing knight d5, after queen d7, we can do whatever we want. We can play something like bishop e3 because bishop h3 fails to knight c7. So that's the idea behind knight d5. So in most positions, what black is going to try to do, black is going to try to chase our knight away with something like knight d8 and c6. Okay, That's going to be black's main way of dealing with this, because we just made this bishop e6, queen d7 battery ineffective. Alternatively, black can go for f5, double the rooks on the f file, and do what we did in the previous position. This position is symmetrical, if we just put the white pawn on, on c2 and white played bishop e3, queen d2. Okay, the difference is that our knight is already on d5, but same principles apply. So, if black plays bishop e6, that's what we do. If black jumps into d4 straight away, we're going to take that knight now, because our bishop isn't on e3 yet. So, I would suggest a general rule that when you can double the pawns on d4 without any consequences you should do that here here and knight e2 and in this position black normally plays a5 
as we said, when there is no pawn on c5, then, then b4 is a way to expand. And especially with the center completely blocked, b4 would be tremendous because there would be no way to punish the queen side over extension by opening the center. So a5. Also threatening a4, so b3. And now something like rook b8. Black wants to break uh, on the queen side. We would like to eventually play f4, f5, but we have to develop first. And you can go knight f4, trying to get into d5. You can play h3, restricting the bishop. You can play a3, preparing to meet uh, a4 with b4. At some point, you can just ignore everything they are doing and just go bishop d2. And after something like c6, they're going to go b5 anyway. The point is you shouldn't be too worried. If, if uh, this is ever played, then black basically has to recapture with the rook, otherwise if, let's say, we did nothing and, and then b5, and this isn't a good structure, of course, so... And after rook takes, the pawn is isolated, so I'm not too afraid of this plan with, with b5, so if something like c5, then again, no b5 pawn break, why do you play rook uh, b8 and, and so on? So knight d4, I don't think is 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 a major threat. You just take it, play bishop, play knight d2, and weakness for black, more space for white. Now the main way to play this is to actually go f5 straight away, and this should be the best continuation to knight g7. <clears throat> We're going to continue with the same move again, knight d5, and bishop e6. Uh, this. Is, is the normal follow-up black is trying to develop and we just go bishop e3 now we are never afraid of pawn takes because we recapture with the pawn we are never afraid of an advance because the square is defended a million times and now again the only difference is that our pawn is on c4 and the black pawn is on c7 and we have a knight uh, on d5 because of that because it's supported okay and black could play knight d4, but we would just go bishop h6. Okay, and now again, black has several ways to play this. Black can play rook a8, which is very natural. Black can play knight d8, going for this eviction of our knight. Uh, in most cases, we're gonna go bishop h6, exchange the bishops, then we have the e3 square for the knight, and or the c3 square for the knight. The only way black can prevent bishop h6 effectively is rook f7 and which is i believe that's why i believe that's the best move it simply prevents white's white's idea and now white has to come up with a different plan now you can of course go f4 uh, you can just wait with rook a1 or rook a c1 but i believe the most flexible is just playing f3 and after something like rook a to f8 uh, we don't go bishop h6 now, we, we keep our dark squares, squares protected, we can go rook ac1, maybe knight c8, b3, and we're just gonna slowly, slowly, slowly try to do something on the queen side. Uh, and this is a slow position, there isn't much going on, uh, as I said, black isn't worse after c4, e5 when we play the Botvinnik. There's a reason for that not being the main, main, main line. But I think this is still slightly more pleasant for white. The engine says plus one for white. I don't think it's as bad as that. Again, the engine doesn't understand space that well, or at least as well as the humans do. And at some point, we can take on f5. And if one pattern you, you have to remember, when black has a pawn on e5, there are two ways to deal with uh ef5 for black if black takes with the bishop our response is going to be d4 always always so on ef5 bishop f5 d4 on ef5 gf5 which isn't good f4 okay this is these are our responses if bishop takes d4 if pawn takes f4 okay uh as i said white doesn't have to play f3 white can play something like rook ac1, uh, rook f8, b4 is possible, knight c8, b5, knight d8, and now again e takes f5, uh, if g takes f5, f4, and then this position, again, d4, 
very very simple you don't have to play d4 you can play knight c3 and playing for the e4 square uh, that's a second way to play this position but i prefer d4 and i think this this is just fine so against uh knight g to e7 remember knight d5 remember that at some point you take on f5 and remember what to do against that against each possible recapture okay uh, the second position i would like to look at is the position with the knight on f6 now i don't think this is as good but it's still playable the idea behind knight f6 is to develop the pieces as quickly as possible uh, blocking in the f-pawn but well, finishing development, development and having a more active knight. The downside is that bishop g5 will be introduced as a new threat. Okay, uh, the, the idea behind bishop g5 is of course knight d5, bishop g5, double pressure on the knight. Indirectly that prevents bishop e6, queen d7 because the queen is not supporting the knight anymore. And that's going to be our main strategic idea to punish this, forcing the knight back after bishop g5. Okay, so let's get into this. So d3 castles, castles. Black plays bishop e6, same idea. Knight d5. Again, we're playing for the c7 weakness, but when the knight is on f6, after queen d7, bishop g5, and the knight has to go back to e8. I think this is favorable for us. Of course, black can at some point play f6 and then maybe even later f5, but we did misplace the knight. Alternatively to knight d5, we can just try to prevent this exchange with h3. Uh, we can do that, but I, I think playing knight d5 is better. Uh, queen d7, king h2 preventing the exchange, knight d8, black is playing for f5, f5, ef5, and again, if gf5, f4, if bishop f5, d4, we get the same position we had previously, we have just transposed. So I, I like knight d5 better. And after bishop g5, knight e8, queen d2, uh, at some point black should play f6. And now we don't initiate the trade, we, we, we bring our bishop back because the bishop really has no influence on, on d4 anymore. So knight d4 is impossible. And one move that I would like to show you is knight to d8, the idea behind which is to play c6. However, to this we can respond with f4 and c6 is actually losing. Black should go f5 here. Because uh, after c6, white just plays f5 and it's game over. Uh, if the most obvious cd5, f6, knight e6 cd5 knight c5 we just continue h4 we break open the structure and our bishops are actually amazing and after something like king h2 our bishop is coming to h3 after h5 these light squares are going to be extremely weak and we may even continue g4 later on with knight g3 this is just great let me give you an example rook c8 h5 g5 and this, without black having a light squared bishop, is just tremendous for us. Okay, <clears throat> that's knight d8. But black should go rook f7, I think. Rook f7 should be better. And we continue f4, f5. Again, e f5, bishop f5. We could play d4 here. d4 is possible. The engine says... In this position, rook a1, which actually, uh, uh, which actually can be played, but d4 is also uh, playable. Okay, so against knight f6, remember this idea with bishop g5. All other ideas are going to be similar, but this is the difference. We get to weaken the knight. Now let's let's have a look at uh, black's most active, and that's f5. I think. This is what black should play. I think f5, preparing to develop the knight behind the pawn, is the most effective. And this is going to be very similar to the Leningrad positions we looked at. 
in the anti-attach video, some positions are actually going to transpose as well, where black just starts with f5 on, on, move, uh, on move 1. Okay, so d3, knight f6 uh, is the main move, and then castles, castles is the main line. However, there are alternatives. One uh, alternative that we have to mention is knight h6. Now, I should say that we're not afraid of uh, fe because of d, and we're fine, and on f4 we can just take, no, no big deal, uh, it's just an extra, extra pawn. The engine says black has compensation for the pawn, but I, I highly doubt that it's full compensation uh, long term. So the only alternative to knight f6 is basically knight h6. Okay, so now what we want to do, uh, we want to use this diagonal because black isn't using it, and black is probably going to be retreating to f7 at some point, so we go h4 straight away, provoking knight f7, otherwise bishop g5. And we are going to be punishing this knight h6 with h5. Now, if we are able to take this, open up the h file, uh, it's not a decisive advantage or anything, but I think because of white space advantage in the center, liquidating uh, the king side or the queen side would highlight that advantage even more. So black really should, oh, by the way, if black takes, that's probably strategically losing because of rook h5, tremendous rook. So black should close the position down with g5. And now we get an advantage by playing e f5, bishop f5 and queen b3. Now, in this case, this is a very strong diagonal, so kingside castles is, I, I mean, looks suicidal. And we're also on the b pawn. And this bishop is great. And after something like rook b8, if the queen ever moves away, then, of course, we have bishop c6 idea. So I don't think knight h6 is as good let's play knight f6 for for black okay castles castles and the same plans knight d5 black is going to play bishop e6 in most cases but there are there are alternatives let's look at them if the knight is taken you always recapture with the c pawn and this is similar to what we did to black and let's say bishop to e3. However, the opening up of the c file at some point uh, will mean that white is the first to get it because black is yet to finish the development. So I don't think this is a good idea. At some point, black is going to have to play c6, which means that we are the first to, to get the c file. Also, bishop g5 is possible in the event of that, just reducing control over c6. Uh, black can also play knight e7, and if knight e7, uh, we are just going to take on f6, and after bishop f6, bishop h6, rook f7, queen d2, I think is pleasant. Again, we're not afraid of f4 or of f takes e4. Uh, it's not easy for black to bring the knight to c5. We have b4 ideas, we have f4 ideas. I, I, I think this is easy to play. Then if, if h6, trying to prevent bishop h6 and bishop to, to g5, we can go h3, uh, preventing knight g4. Uh, I think that's the best way to do it. And something like bishop e6, bishop e3, queen d7. We have to defend the h3 pawn because this pawn could move or take. And again, pretty similar to position to what we looked at, but there is a, a pawn on h6, so from here black can again go knight d8, black can go g5, black can go king h7. Again, white has more space, white wants to play f4, or take on f5 at some point, and we know that against bishop takes we go d4, against pawn takes we go f4. <coughs> and finally, a tricky move, which I, which I have to mention, knight h5. Uh, Against this, and only against this, we take on f5 straight away. Uh, we don't want to allow black too much activity with all the diagonals and files being open. Uh, again, on gf5, you go f4. On bishop f5, 
in this case we don't go d4 we try to punish knight h5 so we go h3 and we're threatening to win a piece so one of black's pieces needs to move back now knight f6 uh, well would be sort of admitting a mistake and if you retreat your knight then you accomplish nothing so bishop e6 and now g4 anyway and of course knight f4 isn't possible so knight f6 and now bishop g5 this is the idea we're going to punish knight h5 by threatening g4 winning a piece then we're going to play g4 anyway and we're going to get this position where it is possible to increase control over e4 and it's never possible for black to trade so black probably plays something like queen d7 and our main plan if we don't go for queen d2 or queen b3 is to go f4 which i think is the best plan and again more space peace activity excellent excellent bishop pair should be better for white okay and black's main idea is of course bishop e6 once again and since the knight is on f6 even though the f pawn has moved we we go bishop g5 again same idea except that the pawn isn't on f7 it's on f5 queen d7 now this isn't really an idea just yet and the rook is of of course already defending the knight so queen d2 uh, th there is an interesting move here which has never been played or maybe once and that's b4 giving up a pawn uh, this is something i prepared for my own repertoire uh, this is sort of deeper preparation than, than what i would like to show in this video and you're going to have to do this by yourself for all the positions but th this is an interesting one i would like to show you and it's a pattern so you can give up the pawn you take uh, cd and after knight b4 if they take the pawn you go to b1 uh, knight a2 tra traps the knight of course so the knight has to be defended with with a5 if knight a6 you would have just taken on b7 and now after a3 knight a6 you can insert ef5 first uh i think that's interesting ef5 gf5 and rook b7 and i i like this position for white now the engine says plus 0.5 after knight c5 however d4 is coming at some point and I, I think the advantages on the queen side are more apparent for black than for white the c7 one uh, especially okay uh, however the, the main move isn't b4 it's it's queen d2 and this is the safe move and for example knight h5 e5 bishop f5 now again you don't have to play uh you don't have to play d4 here in fact it's it's not defended su sufficiently you can go for b4 which is the main move you can again play uh oh you cannot go h3 sorry the queen is already on d7 so watch out for that h3 works if the queen isn't on d7 so b4 probably is the most natural now that the bishop cannot take this expansion if the bishop isn't on e6 is of course the best way to play so yeah i think f5 is the most active and should give white most trouble but white should be slightly better now one line we have to look at is h5 and <clears throat> h5 is an is an independent line and it's easy to learn we're just going to go h4 and now black can play knight d4 or if, if knight d4 we take it that's simple black can play bishop e6 going for the normal bishop e6 plans just with h5 inserted so no problem there we go knight d5 or black can play two independent lines knight h6 with the pawn on h5 increases control over the g4 square so that's slightly problematic in my opinion bishop e6 knight d5 f5 and huge control over g4 however if black does this then black has given up control uh, over the over the dark squares and after something like queen d7 queen d2 i think the hole on g5 is way more useful uh than than the light square weaknesses for white so i don't think this is really that good for black 
Alternatively, black can play the main move, bishop g4. And here, this is the only deviation from our system, which is I wanted to, why I wanted to highlight this h5 idea. We're going to play f3. And f3 in itself isn't a bad move, but it's going to significantly change the way we approach king safety in this position. So delay castling. After this, if you castle at all, bishop e6, d3, everything else is the same, queen d7, knight d5, again, same idea, even though the king hasn't castled, bishop h3 isn't possible, knight d5 is still best, and f5. And since we've already played f3 and everything is safe, we again exploit the dark squared weaknesses with bishop h5. Again, the only difference is that now this really is a very weak queenside, kingside pawn structure after something like knight d8 trying to evict uh, our knight from uh, from d5 and let's say queen d2, maybe even knight f7 or c6. Uh, I, I believe black is fine. And this transfer of the knight to f7 trying to control g5, forcing us to move back and then maybe knight f6 the position is equal. Let's say, well, we don't want to castle kingside. Let's say we castle queenside. This this is good for black. I mean, the engine says about equal, but yeah, they, if they go for this, I find it slightly annoying that I have to play f3 and change my setup. But I think this is one of the best attempts for black to play against the Botvinnik. Okay, and one final thing I would like to look at is the move bishop e6 immediately. We know the idea, we know what we do against it. So d3, queen d7, knight d5 again, pressure on c7, very easy. Uh, if they go, uh, well, they can play several different things. They could go knight d8 straight away, playing for c6. This I think is very sensible. And since this relinquished control over d4, in this exact position, we're just going to go d4, uh, moving back to our plan of pushing through the center. It's not going to be a Sicilian, but it's still going to be pleasant. It's going to be a sort of Philidor with an exchange of d on d4. So c6, knight e3, bishop h3, takes takes, and d5, if this is allowed. Or if black exchanges, we, we have something very similar to the Philidor. I, I, I don't think this is good for black. I think even though they exchanged the bishops, because we got this light squared pawn chain, uh, this sort of King's Indian light squared pawn chain, we don't really want that bishop on the board. That's our bad bishop. So I, I don't know. Knight of six, queen d3, for example, castles, bishop d2. Seems more natural for, for white in my mind. Uh, and then if not knight d8, black could play h5, transposing against we play h4, against which we play f4. They could play f5, again transposing to the lines with, with knight f6. Or they could play one independent line, knight c7 first. And again, since this relinquishes control over d4, we play d4. And after c6, knight e3, bishop h3 again, same idea. Castle stakes, stakes, ed4, knight d4. This, in my mind, is the Philidor. That's how I, how I define the structure or the Pirts after an exchange where white is playing with c4, e4, and for example, knight of six, f3. I think is pleasant for white, even more so than the Sicilian positions because uh, usually in Sicilian positions, there's a pawn on e7 and no pawn on c5. In this case, there's a pawn on c6, and the pawn on d6 will be a weakness. So long term, unless black forces through d5, white is going to have a bind on the d file and on the d6 square. So yeah, uh, the Botvinnik system is something I'm going to be playing regularly, and I look forward to a lot. Now, one of the best things is that even if you don't know the exact move order, remember the ideas, you're going to be okay. And you should have good results. Let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.